Hi, this is Serge Spiro with the Dr. Vax channel, and I am very excited about this video because it was a ton of fun to make. In this video, I decoded a complex puzzle that I've struggled with for about a year. And the puzzle is, what are these precise characteristics of an SVG file that you want to import into Tinkercad? Tinkercad is a very easy to use CAD application for building simple things. Its primary limitation is there's no drawing capability. So you build all of your objects by stacking existing objects. But it does support importing SVG files. But sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So today, we're going to learn a little bit more about SVGs, but specifically, I'm gonna show you a bunch of fascinating tricks about using SVG files with Tinkercad in ways you probably never thought was possible. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Let's begin with the basics. And this is not a tutorial about Tinkercad. It's not a tutorial about Inkscape. It's not a tutorial about Boxy SVG. These are all tools we're going to use today, but it's really how do you combine them together to obtain the best possible results. So let's start with a very simple example. We'll go to the screen. I'm in Tinkercad. I'll click on Import. I'll choose a file. And the file I'm going to choose is the Dr. Vax logo. I'll select that I want to import just the graphic item, not the or artboard around it, so bounded by the graphics. I'm going to change the size to 100 by 100. And um, so it will fit on my workspace. I'm now going to click Import. Now watch what happens. I get an error. Now this is a common occurrence for people trying to use SVG of Tinkercad. In fact, Tinkercad seems to be improving it has more flexibility about the types of files it imports, but this is a common error. So let's try this again. Now I'm going to select a file. I'm calling this Dr. Vax Square Fixed. I'm going to open that file, Artboard, same thing. Let's set the width to 100, import it, and let's see what happens. Now this time it imported properly and automatically converted to a three-dimensional object. Now you'll note it's a composite object. You can't break it apart in any way. You can't ungroup it. It's one object. So if you wanted to manipulate this object, you could manipulate it by using object manipulation techniques such as taking and dragging a box on, making the box a hole, making sure that it's below the surface, grouping the two items together, and now I erased some of that object. If I ungroup, I'll see that that hole is there again. So let's look at two things. First, are there more sophisticated ways, easier ways to manipulate these SVG objects? And why did one import and the other didn't? To do that, we have to look inside the SVG file. Now, SVG files are just text files. You can open them with a text editor like Notepad. I'm going to use an editor called Atom. You cannot open them. They won't save pro resave properly if you try to open them with a word processor like Word. So I'm going to go to an Atom window here. And we can see here I have the original file and then I have the corrected file next to it. Now, in the original file, you'll see there's an XML header. In fact, that XML header will work with Tinkercad. That's not causing the problem. What is causing the problem, and let me actually take and move this down a little bit so we can see them side by side, is in this SVG definition, there is really only one XML NS definition. In this SVG definition, you have all of these other rules in here. And these rules 
do not necessarily work with Tinkercad. What we have to understand is that getting the SVG header correct is what you need to do to import into Tinkercad. By the way, the same types of things apply to exchanging SVG files between other applications. Sometimes these extra headers cause problems. Now, how can I do that? Well, you can do it two different ways. I'm gonna show you how to do it with two different programs. The first is Inkscape. I did a, another video recently on Boxy SVG. I love Boxy SVG because it's so easy to use. We're going to use it for a lot of the examples today, but a lot of people are using Inkscape. Now, Inkscape recently updated to 1.0 beta. The 1.0 beta changed the SVG headers they saved by default, and it appears that the 1.0 beta does work just fine with Tinkercad. But prior to the beta of 1.0, the 0 0.8, 0 0.9 versions, you had to use a little trick. Let me show you that trick. Okay, I've started up Inkscape, and now I'm going to open up that original file. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and here's the original logo. I'm going to open it up, and then we'll drag this corner so it fits on the screen a little more nicely. And now I don't really need to manipulate it. I could manipulate it here. I could move it around. I could edit um, this text. But what I want to do is just save it in a format that Tinkercad will work with. So I go to File, Save As, and here's the trick. Instead of saving it as a standard SVG file, you have to select Optimize SVG. See that right here? And then I can save it under a new name. I'm going to say save. And you need to click on this first one, this first optimization under SVG options. It may start on this screen. We're going to go to this screen and click on remove the XML definition. Now you can remove all of the extra stuff also if you want to. And then you can say, okay, save. And now that file will look like this instead of looking like this. So Inkscape's going to strip that out. Now, another way you can do the exact same thing is with a really easy to use program called Boxy SVG. And I have another video with more detail on this, but if I go to File and Open, and we open this original file up, and now I just save it. I don't need to, or I export it. I'm going to select export. I don't need to do anything special here. Just export it as an SVG. And we'll call this um, corrected file. And we'll put it at the top of the file, top of the directory. Save it. Now I'm going to open this in Atom so you can see what the file actually looks like. Let's close this guy here. And you can see that Boxy SVG does put an XML header, but it puts a very, very simple SVG header on it. So we're going to take and wrap this so we can see it here. And you can see there's only this one definition in here. And that will work perfectly with Tinkercad. Okay, now let's go to Boxy SVG, draw some shapes, and see how they import into Tinkercad. And I'm going to use Boxy SVG because it is the easier of the two tools to use. You could do everything I'm doing here in Inkscape. You just have to make sure that you save as optimized SVG. So I'm going to first drag a rectangle onto my screen. I'm going to give it a color. Then I'm going to edit the corners. Okay, that looks like an interesting shape. I'm then going to go to export. Instead of going to save, where Boxy will put a little bit of headers in there, I'm going to go to export. I'm going to export it as just SVG. I'm going to say export. And we'll give it a name of 000 box. That existed, so we replaced it. 
Now I'm going to go and import that file, 000 box. I'm going to resize it so it's a little bit smaller, so it'll fit on our screen and do an import. And there you go. And in fact, this is now a multi-dimensional object that we can shape however we would like. But what's, why is it so big and why did it come in so big? So let's take and delete that and let's show you how you adjust the size. Now, an SVG file is unitless. There's really no standard concept of units. You can create something called a viewport with units that's used for the web, but SVG generically is in user units. And so it's the ratio of the units, a width of 25 to a height of 50. It's that ratio that's important. Okay. So this time, let me start with a box again. I'm going to double click on the box icon and tell that the corners are now square. I'm going to create a box and to see this lock, I want it unlocked. I'm going to make it 50 by 50. And I can take and move this to the center here. Here we go. And I'll take and zoom in a little bit. So now we have a box that's 50 by 50. I'm not going to do anything else to it. I'm going to take and export it. And we'll call this 000 box 50. Save. Now let's go into Tinkercad and import it. Choose box 50. Open. Art only. You'll see the dimensions here are set at 50. So a unit in Boxy SVG or a unit in Inkscape, these generic units become millimeters when you import into Tinkercad. Let's go ahead and import this. And we have our box here. We can click on it, click on a dimension, and we'll see it's 50 by 50. So you can set things to a particular size in Inkscape or in Boxy. You just have to remember that the unit is generic in SVGs, but converts to the unit of a millimeter, at least in Tinkercad, when set to metric. Okay, let's delete that now. Let's go back to Boxy, and we have our nice square here. Let's make it a color just so it's a little bit easier to see. And now we're going to take and draw a circle and let's put it more or less in the middle there. And the color doesn't matter. Now let's take and save this. And 000 box circle. Save. Okay, so now let's go to Tinkercad and import that. So I'm going to click on import, choose a file, box circle, open, art only, import. And look what happened. Okay, so we had two objects. Tinkercad made the first one a solid and the second one a whole. What if we have three objects? Well, let's try that. So let's go back to Boxy for a minute. And now let's take and put a, um, how about a cog? A much more interesting shape right here in the middle. I'm going to change the color so we can see it. And now we will take and move that to the center of that circle. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Here we go. So now we have three objects. Export. Export. 000 box circle cog. Save. Go to Tinkercad. Import. Choose a file. Let's see here. Box circle cod, cog. Open. Art only. Import. Wow. So the First object 
is always solid. The next object is always a whole. And so the order of the objects matter. And if we go and we look back at Boxy SVG, we look at the objects, we have a solid, a whole, a solid. So very, very interesting. But what if I wanted this to be combined with this box? If I take and I import this now, it's still the third object, it's going to cut that out. So if I select the box and I select the second object, and then I go to the, my shape menu and I click on unite, they're now one object instead of two. So if I go back to objects, now we have a path and a circle. The path will be a solid, the circle will be a whole. Let's double check this is going to work. Zero, 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 path and whole, save, go to Tinkercad. Let's get rid of this one. Import, choose a file. And let's see which one we had here. All the way down here. Here we go. Art, import. And that came in the way we wanted. So you need to remember that Tinkercad is going to do solid whole, solid whole. And therefore, if you have two shapes you want to combine together, you have to do a unite, a Boolean combine, in before you take and you save it. Or Tinkercad's going to treat your second shape as a whole. Okay. Now, what if I just wanted my box to be an outline? I just wanted the edge around the box. Well, there's a problem. You would think you could do that. Uh, let's take and delete this by dragging a box onto your screen. And let's give it a color once again so we can see it. Whoops. So I can select that, give it a color. And then we can go here to stroke and we can say we want an outline around the outside. And we can go back to color, fill, and we can make the inside transparent, empty. So how do you think this will import into Tinkercad? Well, let's see. Export, we'll call this 000 box stroke, save. And now let's go to Tinkercad, import, choose a file. Let's see here, box stroke, import, artboard. And what are we gonna get here? Wow, a solid box. And how big is it? Well, um, we had changed the size, but basically it's the size of the original box. So how do we create that outline? Okay, so let's try this again with a little bit of a trick. We're gonna take and we're going to create a rectangle. I'm going to give it a color, just like we did before. I'm going to stroke the outside, just like we did before. Then I'm going to make the inside blank. And when we look at our objects, we have one object here. Now I'm going to go to the shape option here, make sure that this shape is selected and say stroke to path, not shape to path. That's not what we want. We want stroke to path. We want the stroke to be a series of paths or just lines. Click on that once. If I go down to here now, you see we have a rectangle and a path. I can take and say, don't display that rectangle and nothing changes. Don't display the path and the stroke, which is not a stroke anymore, now it's a path, went away. So I'm going to just hit the delete key and delete that rectangle. Now if I click on my edit tool and click on this, and we zoom in a little bit here to see a corner, you'll see we have two, two separate points here. So this is actually now a path that has an inside path and an outside path. It's one path but it has thickness, it has two walls. So from Tinkercad's point of view, it's a single object. If we look at it in our layers here, 
we see it's a single object. So let's take and export that now. Zero, 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 we'll call that path. Save. Now let's go to Tinkercad and import it. Choose a file. And let's see, zero, 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 path. Open, just our art. And there we go. We have just the outside of the box. Now, you can do that with any stroked item. So any item that you put a outline around with the stroke command, if you convert the stroke to a path and then delete the original item, you'll get just the item. Think about cookie cutters. Now let me show you one other piece of magic to wrap up today. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in this video, but this is really exciting stuff. Now this next feature, I cannot do in Boxy SVG. So I'm going to do this in Inkscape. So I'm going to go to Inkscape. Let's delete this object here. And now I'm going to do a import of a actual flat file. This is a nice file. This is a solid bunny. Let's take and open that. Now, if I take and export this, this is a image file. Tinkercad will not be able to use this. So just to demonstrate that, I could say file, save as, and we'll say bunny img. Let's give it a 000, zero, zero so it shows at the top of our directory. I'm going to take and save that. Now well, let's go to Tinkercad and see what happens if we try to import that. And it's thinking. And we get an error because Tinkercad does not work with image files. So how do we create, from an image file, we create a path? Well, in Inkscape, there's a command under path, and it says trace bitmap. So I'm going to tell it to trace this bitmap. There are a bunch of parameters you can set to adjust how it does the trace. I'm gonna say okay. And now, we have here actually though, we have two objects. We have the bitmap we, we traced, and then we have the original bitmap. So we're gonna delete the original bitmap, leave the traced object, and now we're going to do a file, save as, optimize SVG, and we'll say just bunny, save, Okay, now let's go back to Tinkercad. And let's see, we have the bunny here. And you'll notice also that the first file was pretty big, 84 KB. The second one's only five, because all it has is SVG commands now, not all those bitmap dots. Let's open that up. And let's set the size to a smaller size and import it thinking, and there we go. There's our bunny. Now, if we wanted to use this for a cookie cutter or something, we could do the same thing. We could take and do that in Inkscape, but I uh, love using Boxy for this. So I'm just going to do a file, open, and in Boxy, I'm going to open our bunny. There we go. And uh, I'm actually going to make it even a little smaller there. We'll put it there in the middle. We'll move this over so that you can see it. Now I'm going to take this item. I'm going to stroke it with a stroke. And uh, we can change the size of the stroke. And the size of the stroke is going to use the same parameter. So a stroke of one will be one millimeter. Two would be two millimeters. 
and we're going to say it's a non-scaling stroke. So if we set it to two, it's always going to stay two millimeters because we, when we import this for a cookie cutter, we don't want it to get too thin. Okay. And now I can go to my object, stroke to path. I can look at the different layers. We have this first one, which was the original bunny. So we're going to get rid of that. And then we have the second one, which is our outline. So now let's go here to export, export, bunny, outline, save. Let's go back to Tinkercad and we should get a wonderful cookie cutter in here. We'll make it a little smaller. Import, it's thinking, and there we go. A perfect cookie cutter. And you do need to make sure that these lines are at least about a millimeter, because if you go too small, too close to the nozzle size on your 3D printer, then when you go to print them, they won't actually print. Folks, thanks for watching today. I hope you learned a lot. Feel free to watch this video lots of time. There's a lot of material. Share it with everyone you, you know, because this is such a powerful set of techniques that many people struggle with. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel. Have a great day, and let's continue to learn new things together.